Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesdays with Erica on the Ability 411. Whew, what a week it has been. Um, I just got home on Sunday um, from Miss Wheelchair America 2013, which I have to say as a former Miss Wheelchair America that every single year these girls just get better and more inspiring and more driven and more vivacious and it's amazing it is absolutely amazing all of you guys that competed um, if you're watching this I am so proud and I am inspired by each and one of you, each and every one of you um, Josie you were an amazing title holder I'm so proud of you for your year and the things that you accomplished and Mariah you are going to fill those shoes and succeed and have an amazing year as well. So good luck to you. Okay, so this week we are talking about myths about people with disabilities. Um, one of the biggest ones that I've encountered quite a bit um, and on a regular basis is when people find out I have children. Well, you're paralyzed and you have kids? Well, how did that happen? Well, it happened the same way it happened when your mom got pregnant with you. <laughs> if you don't know about the birds and the bees yet, I can give you the 411. Not today, but hit me up. I got you. <laughs> so yeah, people with disabilities are definitely able to have children. And they're actually able to be single parents as well. Um, I have my oldest daughter who will be 13 next month and um, I had her prior to being injured and then I had my two youngest ones who are eight almost nine and six um, so you know they're a good age difference away from each other and I had natural pregnancies normal pregnancies healthy pregnancies and natural birth so that's myth number one proven false um, I actually have quite a few friends in the industry who also have children and some of whom have had them since they've been injured and some of whom have had them before. Um, I also have friends who were born with cerebral palsy and um, you know other disabilities and they also have children and have succeeded to be wonderful parents. So break that stigma right there. Um, Myth number two is, well, how do you have sex? We are, like, I can't think of the word. I don't want to say unisex, but it's like we're asexual to, to, the, to the normal community. And, um, you know, throughout the years, um, that has definitely been kind of proven wrong. Um, but it's still a big stigma on us. And usually the very first question that I get asked when I meet a guy or even just in normal conversation, some of my friends have asked me, is always, well, how do you, and then they pause, and I already know what it is. Have sex, I say? <laughs> the same way you do. Um, you know, especially for a female, it's a lot easier. Um, you know, our feeling level definitely is, can be compromised. Um, for some people, for some people it's not compromised at all. So it really just depends on the individual and the ability level. Um, but it is possible. Um, I even have guy friends who are paraplegics and they're able to have sex. So, I mean, I would suggest getting in contact with a male friend if you have questions. Because um, obviously I'm not good in that department, but as a female, um, it's definitely possible. Um, as I said in myth number two, I've had, I'm sorry, myth number one, I'm going out of order. I've had two children since I have been injured. So, um, yeah, that's the answer to that question. Myth number three for me um, would be the whole um, stigma of you can't be successful and be in a chair. Now, I know Tiffany talked a little bit about, you know, people 
thinking that people with disabilities aren't able to still achieve their dreams. And, um, you, you know, vocationally, as she said, you can be an actor, a lawyer, a doctor, anything you want to be. Um, you know, but the side of that subject or that myth that I want to talk about is the whole stigma of, well, you're too pretty to be in a wheelchair, or how do you work, or how do you get to work? Um, oh, you have to have less hours because you're in a wheelchair. Nope, negative, 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 and negative. All of those are so very incorrect. Um, I actually, with my job, I'm a consumer advocate for the Vehicle Production Group, which is the MV1, the cool car that I keep um, posting about and posting pictures and talking about. Um, I, I'm a consumer advocate, and so I work both at home as well as on the road. I travel um, a lot. I travel more than most able-bodied people do. Um, you know, and I hold my job, and I love my job. I'm very passionate about what I do, and, um, you know, I put a lot of time, um, a lot of effort, and, um, you know, I, I do my best. I work to my best ability. You know, it's always a learning process, but with anybody else, with any job that you're going to encounter as an able-bodied person, it's going to be the same scenario for you as well, you know, so I'm not any different. Um, I've said in the previous video when we did the myth, you know, we did a previous video about some of these myths and I said, you know, I don't like the word disabled. I like the word differently abled because we are all able to do things um, that able-bodied people can do. We just do them in a different way. You know, I look at my, I call him my little brother, um, but, you know, one of my close friends, Aaron Fatheringham, he does wheelchair backflips.